So roll has been taken, Tom, so whenever you're ready. If you, unless you want to wait a few minutes until Mark. For Mark. I have one o'clock. It's called meeting uh, to, to order the meeting of the Manistee Harbor Commission. Has anyone, everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. I'll make a motion we approve the agenda as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have someone here from the public. Mary Lou. Who wishes to make comments? No, at this time, just observing. We'll give you five minutes. <laughs> Very well. Uh, everyone looked over the minutes from our last brief meeting. A motion for approval or any changes? I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Old business. Revetment. So as I reported at the last meeting, um, we experienced a little bit of erosion uh, from splash uh, right at the top of the stone uh, on what we termed reach A, which is from the or west of the boat launch. So we had the contractor come back um, and they finished last week putting in just a, another small section of of splash stone just to absorb that and reduce erosion. Um, so um, since they're done with that portion, the project is substantially complete and uh, we'll just be working on some punch list items. I'm, there, there's been a little bit of washout and stuff to the restoration. So I think they'll just need to do a little raking, probably reseeding and that project is uh, just about completed. So you say receding, so that also is in the fire section. Yeah, yeah. W was it basically just the corner nearest the um, boat launch? No, uh, there was probably 100 feet, 150 feet where, where the, this, I mean, we had a pretty massive west storm, winds out of the west. Right. And um, that's one of the sections in the core wave study that showed um, um, concentration of wave energy. So where it was splashing up against the riprap, there was just a little bit of that sand that had eroded. Um, I think when the dune grass grows and spreads, it'll hold it. But just in that interim, we thought it would be best just to place a little bit more protection there. So um, the project still ended up under, under budget and uh, it's receiving a lot of positive feedback from the community, so I'm very pleased with it. Under the bridge, I know they carried it another 100 feet or so beyond where the plan was. Right, well, and several with hundred. That, several. With that, in my, with that being paid for, it was under the original budget? Correct. It's great. Yeah, we actually, um, in reach B and C, which is east of the boat launch down to the net shed, okay. those two stretches, when we calculated the stone tonnage that was used to accomplish that, it was well underneath the plan quantity. Mm. So we essentially transferred that extra stone quantity and then were able to complete all the way to the breakwater or to the steel sheet piling um, to the east or to the west. It makes it look more complete. I, I yep, that was our wish all along is that we could accomplish that, but um, we, we just had to go into it kind of uh, cautiously to make sure we could fund all of it. But, yeah, I'm glad it was all completed. I, I feel like they did a nice job, mm -hmm. visually at least. Um, if, if we were to have that kind of splash damage again, it would probably be within the ability of Public Works to repair it, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was, it was probably just a 12-inch section that, that had any impact. Um, but I, I think again, once that once the dune grass takes hold in there, I don't see us having many issues at all. I mean, and it wouldn't have changed; it wouldn't have hurt the integrity of the wall or anything. But I noticed there's a couple empty pads uh, where the river walk comes before the sidewalk. Correct. Are those 
for future benches that haven't been yes okay. they've actually yeah. been they've actually already been spoken for yeah um yeah, i don't think i'm allowed to say yet but there's two different parties that purchased all of those and um, I'm just working to try to find whether or not there's a more maintenance friendly type bench that we can put in there so we don't have to pull them in and resand them every three years. Not having much luck in that in that realm at the moment, but we haven't given up yet. So I believe we'll have be able to put benches in there yet this summer though. I see. Okay. Nice. And that honestly, that was just an add on that wasn't in the original plan. But when the sidewalk got laid out, there was enough room, and so I just added a little change order to, to do that. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's real nice to have spots along there for people to sit and enjoy the view. Glad to see it done. Yes. Well, moving on to the any other comments or questions about that project? Let's move on to the marina dock replacement update. So we're in very good shape with that. Um, they are just finishing up. All the pilings are set. The docks have been installed. They're just finishing up the decking um, at the joints right now. Um, they expect to be completed by tomorrow. And uh, I'm doing a preliminary punch list walkthrough with the engineers and the contractor tomorrow. So. They will be functioning and ready to go for the summer. Very early in the season. Hasn't snowed since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. Uh, I was. Uh, I noticed the pylons. Yep. When they came out, th th they looked to be in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. Can you sell those? Repurpose them? We, so my plan is, first of all, when we did the rest of the marina, I've salvaged all the pilings from there as well. So we have those stored out at our um, compost site. But these pilings, my plan is, I had them delivered to the boat launch at First Street. And we are building a 18 hole disc golf course at First Street that begins around Lighthouse Park and kind of goes out to Lake Michigan, past the tennis court, comes back around the dog park, and then ends back up uh, by the bathrooms at the softball field. So um, we're, we're creating a nautical theme in there. And so some of the holes where there's not natural vegetation and trees for obstructions, we're gonna put pilings in and use those, reuse those pilings. They'll be at different heights and staggered. So it, it creates obstacles and makes the course a little more challenging. So, and then in the future, uh, you know, whatever's left over, I'll keep and, and whenever we've got a use for them, we'll reuse them. So to me, it didn't seem worthwhile giving them away or, or just landfilling them because there's still a lot of life in the, some of those. Especially where they're embedded, you know, where they're above the water, they're more prone to rot, but everything below the water surface and especially embedded in the in the mud, they're pristine. How long have they been? Some of those are original from 70, 72. So 50 years. Nice in. Do we know if the uh, barge and crane has got a new job to hurry off to? I'm positive that they do. Yeah, they time this, uh, they time, I mean, this is a very small project for equipment that size. So they timed it. So they were heading up to do a job in Sheboygan and then on their way back, knock this out mm -hmm. and then off to their next project. So the timing worked out well for them and obviously worked out well for us because that was under our estimated budget too. Questions, comments? <clears throat> do we have a marina manager? We do. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Katie Trevisano. She is the new uh, public works clerk. 
and uh, I'll let her speak to it if she wishes or if you would like to hear from her, but um, she was our, uh, our best candidate, but she also has a unique background in that she managed a full uh, Harborview Marina, Harborview, in Ludington for 13 years and then also had three years experience at a campground in Ludington, which uh, if anybody camps in boats, it's one has concrete pads and the other has water. Oops. But it's really the, the same type of operation. So um, Katie will be acting as our, or not acting, but she will be our marina manager. Um, and while she won't be working there on a daily basis, she'll be overseeing um, the staff there and you know, keeping things coordinated, working on schedules. Um, one of the things that really stuck out to me was her devotion to customer service and training um, in her previous jobs. And so um, I just knew I had to find a way to take that experience and, and help our marina staff and, and bring our facility kind of up to that next level I'm expecting. So. Um, in her defense, we don't have a lot of records and stuff to go by, so uh, we're, we're jumping in the deep end of the pool, and we'll have it up and running as soon as we get some staff, um, probably in about a month, and uh, we'll be off and running. We do have the positions open, advertised right now, for the uh, marina attendance, so if you're aware of anybody that would like a, uh, honestly, a perfect summer job, um, those are available. They can be picked up at City Hall. And um, our intent is to make those full-time positions. They've been part-time in the past. So we'd like to give, give especially you know, the younger college kids, um, as many hours as we can, um, as they save for college and so forth. Um, and then we're going to be working with the Parks Department to get the marina staff more integrated into the, the grounds maintenance. And um, I've heard some comments over the winter that people just observed that there wasn't a lot of outside work activity by the marina attendants. So we're gonna try to maximize those staff and make the days go by faster and help improve that whole area, so. Do you get many return people or are they just new every year? Um, we've. I know that um, she had trouble recruiting people yeah. the past three, four years. Um, the first thing, the main thing that I, that she reported to me was the wages. Um, so last year we raised all of the wages for the city, all of the city's part-time staff up to a starting at $12 an hour. Um, we were able to then fulfill the people that we needed at the marina last year. But I also think that um, there, there's no restriction. I mean, you don't have to be a, a, a youth going to college. Yeah. That's not a requirement. But that's usually a very good fit yeah. for that, that work schedule. And um, I think that, that when the previous manager was doing part-time positions, it's not quite as appealing to somebody in that, in that time of their life because they got to work and, they, and usually they're working a full-time job and a part-time job, sure. you know, trying to make the money while they can. So, so we're going to change up our strategy, try to make it more attractive and see what happens. And then we usually give, I typically give returning people a quarter an hour bump. I was going to say there's municipal marinas up and down the harbor or up and down the lakefront run the DNR. Uh, is the wages determined by just the area, or do they set a standard that you have to go by, or can you? They do, they do not set a standard. Whatever you want, then you can hopefully attract more people. Yeah, okay. yeah they, they do control the seasonal and the transient rates, yeah. um, but not the wages. wages. I have noticed there's been a drift from college kids to, I think we had one college kid last year. One young person. I think we had one, yes. Yeah. And, uh, With the pandemic fading, maybe things will get a little more back to... Yeah, I mean, the pandemic really changed everything, yeah. so... Is, is there a concern or regulation about uh, pumping gas? You have to be 18 in order to, to handle fuel. 
Um, all of our part-time help, we require you to be 18 anyway, because typically we can't supervise everybody. Yeah. They're driving city, using city equipment, driving city vehicles. So that's kind of the standard we set. But but the, um, I believe it was the insurance company's requirement is to handle the fuel, you have to be 18. I thought there was something. Okay, if we're ready to move on. Katie, did you want to ever? Oh, sorry. I told her we would good. reserve 10, 15 minutes for her to. 15 minutes. <laughs> 10. I'm still learning as we go, so I'm taking notes. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Glad to have you on board. Thank you. I'm excited. Uh, the Harbor Master, have any comments? A um, couple things. Uh, the city manager and I had a meeting. Um, earlier today on the land conversion from the marina so the small parcel that we plan to sell to Fricano's restaurant um, just as a reminder because some of that land was acquired through previous grant funds the National Park Service determined that we cannot sell that without then converting another piece of property into new parkland so we have to acquire land, we have to um, dedicate it towards park use, and then we actually have to do improvements to it. Um, we've proposed uh, a one acre portion of the 10 acres that we acquired from Morton Salt um, as part of our wastewater treatment plan expansion. And the one acres would be along Lake Manistee Lake and adjacent to the 9th Street boat launch. So we received verbal approval on that parcel um, and now we've got to go through the formal conversion process. Um, if you are in a, in a conversion process, but have not completed it, and you sell the land, you automatically get a negative 50 points on any of your DNR grant applications. Mm -hmm. So um, fortunately, um, Mr. Fricano was willing to delay the acquisition of that land um, to allow us to submit for uh, a DNR grant to upgrade the North River Walk, um, which we did April, March 30. Mm -hmm. and, um, but now we're going to go into the conversion process in earnest, and we've got to go through a lot of environmental and survey stuff and site plans, and, um, but hopefully we can get that completed either prior to receiving a grant or... Um, I pray it's not denied. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's that's kind of in waiting. Um, and I know when, when he opens up, he's going to be anxious to get that land and expand his deck portions and so forth. But uh, we're working well with them. And, so, and the big reason today, the National Park Service approved that land replacement. Before, we are still kind of debating with them or going back and forth. But they approved it, so now we can move forward as as Jeff mentioned. Is that area between the wastewater treatment and the boat launch itself? Yes. Yep. It's the lakefront area. Yep. It, so the other thing that um, I wanted to update you on is um, the Corps of Engineers is planning to do dredging this fall in the harbor. They are also um, Next week, I plan to go out for bids for the uh, rehabilitation work on the South Breakwater, um, where we've lost some of the cap. They plan to award that contract uh, by August, September, and then are giving the contractor just about 18 months to complete that. So the, the belief is that they will be occupying um, the lower parking lot at First Street Beach and then doing work on that concrete cap um, probably beginning in the spring of 23 and going through uh, fall of 2023. And because <coughs> the, core act, this, the United States actually owns a physical parcel where that breakwater is landward, um, but it is surrounded by city parkland so uh, tonight at the city council meeting, we actually have a uh, right of entry agreement that allows them to utilize city parkland uh, for those improvements. Um, 
I don't know if there's any anything else on that. Um, uh, they don't think it'll start till the fall at the early, or they're going to bid it out in the fall and then construction next year at the earliest. But yeah, they could they could mobilize this fall. Uh, they said they were going to award <clears throat> number, but the government doesn't really move that fast. Uh, last thing I had is um, the finance office has order change. Um, so we expect to get that in next week and should have the boat launch. Um, boat launch is officially opened and ready for pay collection next week, so. Um, we're getting our welcome to Manistee sign back up on the hillside. We will, once, once that's stabilized, I'll have that reinstalled. City Manager, please. Thank you. So, looking at the look in your pack at the 2022 boat launch revenue. So, outside of your 2020, this is a little bit lower than normal. We've got 26 seasonal permits um, for a total of 1,170 collected to date. I don't know, Jeff. Do we um, do we do more advertising in the past? I'm not sure why it'll be lower this year. Well, but this is only through March. Through March, okay. So we're still in preseason. We just didn't have those numbers either. So. so maybe it'll pick up, yeah, through April. The only thing that was really different is that we had construction. Um, I don't. I wouldn't think that would have hurt because everybody was able to get in and out without much, much challenge. But um, fuel prices, weather. And how the fish are biting are always things that we can't control. Um, we haven't adjusted the rates for the launch ramps in, I think, a few years. I don't know if there's any any interest in discussing that. I thought we did. Well, we did on the pass. You yeah, have in the past. Yep. Yeah. About two years ago, was it? We adjusted the pass, not not tremendously, a little bit. Daily is five dollars. No, I think it's eight. Is it ten? Ten. Yeah. Ten and then forty-five. Ten and forty-five. Yeah. Ten and forty-five. So, if there was any interest in adjusting those, uh, now would be the time to do so. Um, typically, they would be recommended, and then city councils in the in the budget process are reviewing the budget. Um, this could be amended to the schedule of fees and could be implemented July 1st if there was any desire to change those either up or down or just leave them the same. As a pass holder, I hesitate to say anything, <coughs> but it does seem like a bargain. Um, I, I use it quite a bit. Um, I, I have no feel for the daily charge, if that's high or low. For I think this area, it's probably reasonable. The seasonal is pretty a bargain, like you said. I, when we, people were timid about adjusting that a couple of years ago, and we did, I, I think we went just from 40 to 45. Right? That's what it was, yeah. yeah. I guess you'd have to look at what the surrounding area is getting to. I don't know if it can be a factor. I know that past discussions were. Oh, 90, I'm sorry. You know, if you come for a four day weekend, you're going to launch four days. $40. $40. Maybe we make it just a little bit more to make give the incentive gotcha. of doing a seasonal, right. but. Um. Yeah. And it looks like in 2020, I was just confirming with Kelly, it went from 40 to 45 for the seasonal. Mm -hmm. as, a, as an individual, not as your chairperson, I wouldn't be upset to see it adjusted to uh, 50. Are there any other pass holders present? Yeah, it's a bargain. It's, it's a At 50, it's still a good deal, yes? Yeah, I've got one. It's 45 is a bargain. 50 is still a bargain. <clears throat> Could I make the motion that we suggest recommend 
to the council to adjust the seasonal pass to 45? From 45 to 50? Uh, from 45 to 50, <coughs> yes, sorry. I would support that. Yeah. Um, All in favor? All right. Aye. It may make up for what could be lost due to gas prices and less people. It's hard to say. I don't think that's going to no. convert any people from passing over. Oh, no. no. Well, the, 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 yeah, the reality is that the, the boat launch is profitable, but there's a lot of capital improvements that are coming towards us in the future. They're not moving away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we always use the example of Arthur Street. When we upgraded Arthur Street, that was a $440,000 capital project. And at some point, um, the concrete deck or the concrete ramps at First Street are going to need to be replaced. Um, certainly, the boat launch parking lot needs repaving. And that's about a quarter million dollars just to do a mill and fill on that parking lot. Um, and we've got desires, I think, at this level, for certain at the staff level, and then city council is pushing to do upgrades at the 9th Street boat launch as well. So the fees that are generated from these user users are essentially what pays for our match on, on grants to do those improvements. That's what so I was going to ask. It goes into a dedicated account for the boats and correct. launches. Yep. The, the marina uh, boat launches are an enterprise fund. Except for 9th Street. Right? 9th Street we don't charge right now. But the expenses come out. Right. Some, some, most of the expenses come out of our parks budget, but when we do work on the ramp itself or on the skid pier there, that comes out of the boat launch fund. The, um, the ramp at First Street, it has the lake falls. It is pr plenty long for most trailers and boats. Or yeah, the only time we've had issues with that when, our, when we were at the all-time low. Uh -huh. And well, the last... I mean, it wasn't that long ago, what, five years ago, four or five years ago, when we were at the all-time low, um, we put, at the end of that ramp, it's a, obviously it's a concrete ramp, but when they poured it, they, they coffer dammed it with steel and then poured right to the coffer dam and they cut the steel off at the top of the concrete. Mm -hmm. So the problem that we have at the end of that ramp is when the lower the lake levels get, the more impact that it is from power loading and power offloading. So prop wash will uh, scour the sand from the end of that sheet pile and we usually get a, a hole at the end. So when people are backing in deeper, mm -hmm. then they go off the edge. Um, I think in, so about four or five years ago, we, were, we placed stone there because we still had permits that hadn't expired from when we did it five years prior to that. but. Um, but under normal water water levels, there shouldn't be any issues. I don't see many people power powering up under their trailers there. I'm sure it's done. Well, I think they can, that increases exponentially when the water gets lower and they can't get as far in. Oh, okay. So the problem of low water gets exacerbated by, by the low water. And, People, you know, their vessels just aren't floating as much or... Gotcha. So usually when we get down to that, that bottom tier is when we start having some issues. So towards the end of our last meeting, um, it came up that perhaps we could do better at marketing the marina. Mm -hmm. And I asked permission to invite Mark Sandstead to address us with any possible ideas along those lines. Hello, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Mark Sandstead. I'm acquainted with many of you. Hello. Um, I own MS Creative. I've been in business 30 years. We do all forms of marketing, and I really take each individual case as an individual case that it is. So um, I didn't bring anything prepared. I mean, I think we need to have some 
initial discussions before I were to bring any kind of formal proposal. But from a marketing standpoint, I mean, really, if you look at the marina, I'm local, so I guess I understand the ebbs and flows of, of that business. Um, you know, obviously, the last few years have been challenging because of your, you know, the damage that was done during the SASH and all of the reconstruction. And now with the new docks, you're, you're, ready, to, you're ready to showcase yourself to the world. So, you know, it's the middle of April, end of April. Most of your seasonal publications for tourism have already long closed. That window has passed for this year. Uh, certainly this summer you would want to probably get some new photographic and video assets of your new docks and, you know, the, the place, you know, in its glory because it is a beautiful facility. So if you look at the marina, uh, and I don't know how you break it down between seasonal dockage and transient, but that's your two products. You've got people that are buying seasonal dockage or you've got transient docks. So obviously the seasonal people are local people, so you reach them accordingly. Um, the people that are here on transient could be anywhere. Uh, for those of us boaters that know people have to have a reason to come to Manistee. If you're transversing Lake Michigan, you're going to go 40 miles around trip out of your way to come into Manistee. So there's got to be a reason to come here. And, and I think a lot of that naturally goes hand in glove with what the CVB does and, and the DDA and everything, everybody else that has a reason to come to Manistee. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I would look at, you know, if I were to, to bring a proposal, I'd like to look at, a, you know, at least a two or three or four year plan because I think the first part of that plan just has to kind of be collecting some assets. And I don't want to show a photo of the marina five years ago because mm -hmm. it's not the same facility. You've got a new manager that's got some customer service background, that's huge. Um, you know, when you get customers there, make sure they want to come back. Those, you know, a smile goes a long way at the gas pump. You know, those little things that you have control over all contribute to your marketing, to your brand. Um, so as far as, you know, any ideas, um, you know, that discussion would have to start, you know, what are you looking at as a priority? Is it that seasonal dockage? Is it the transient dockage? I don't know. That's a strategy. Thing that you have to, you know, and I, is it 50-50, Jeff, or what would be what would be ideal? Well, it, we're capped on on the seasonals by the state, and we've actually got more than what they typically allow. To me, the the transient is is what rings our bell, mm -hmm. and the way I've always looked at it um, is the word of mouth with the boaters, and you're a boater, mm -hmm. so. The word of mouth with the boaters when they leave here and go to their next place, mm -hmm. to me, that's the marketing. Hundred percent. So, what I'd like to, what I'd like to think about is, what what makes that experience unique? What makes Manistee unique? What would make you stay at our facility and tell everybody in mm -hmm. every, every other port you go to? Mm -hmm. Because that's what's going to generate return trips and no doubt. And um, and then what kind of tools? You know, can Katie use to make sure our staff is delivering that? Mm -hmm. And are there handouts that would make the entertainment in the area or the resources that we have? Like, mm -hmm. you know, so I think that even though some of the publications are already out, right? Um, you got some groundwork to lay. Yeah. yeah. Are, there, are there some things that we could do absolutely the season and the personal interactions that would. And those are all invariably things you have 100% control over. How guests are treated, how they're greeted, how they're, you know, how they're treated when they're there. Are the facilities clean? Are, 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 are the, is the staff attentive? All of those things. Then maybe they came to Manistee and had the best steak of their life at the Bluefish. Well, that sticks in the back of their mind. Right. Or maybe they came here during the Forest Festival and they <clears throat> leave the band they saw or whatever. And a lot of those things are, again, that, that's bigger than the marina. It's more destination related and obviously, those are the reasons people come here. So, uh, you know, the, the good news is from like a search engine standpoint, you type in Manistee Marina, you guys come up because just by virtue of you being the Manistee Marina. So that, that's a positive thing because it it's, makes it easier for people to at least find you and you come up above private facilities that, that also come up in that search. But it really just kind of boils down to from, a, from an organizational standpoint, what are your goals and objectives? And what are those incremental gains you want to see, as you were just talking about in this business, it's weather related. You could have the, the best of everything and have the coldest summer and 
you know, the, so there are things you can market your way out of and there are things you can't. But to Jeff's point, those intangible things, uh, the customer service, the facility, all of those things that are within your control, those don't cost anything. It's just being conscious and, and having a plan and a standard that you hold your, your staff and employees to. Um, you know, from a marketing, you know, and, and that truly is, that, that's, that's square one for your brand. I mean, if, a, if it's a, you know, if it's a dirty facility and people aren't treated properly, you know, a nice ad in the visitor's guide doesn't, uh, right. doesn't, doesn't change that. So, you know, I think, you know, going into it, the first step is like anything else. Okay, we have a problem. We need to do some marketing. Well, what is that first step? Well, it, I think it falls on your, on your local management and staff to come up with an appropriate, you know, approach to just, it's a mindset, you know, just like in my business, when you answer the phone, you might be having a bad day, but that, that person on the other end doesn't, that doesn't matter to them. You've got to be, you know, your voice has to smile and, and those types of things. Um, I don't know, you know, you could get into ways, you know, to how to try to incentivize that word of mouth, you know, I don't know what that is, but we could brainstorm those types of things. And then, you know, in terms of pure marketing in my world, it's just, going to be devised or, or what's what's the budget what do you what you know you got a five thousand dollar plan or a five hundred thousand dollar plan which it's not going to be but my point is is your reach is predicated by what you have to put behind it and that just needs to be prioritized in terms of you know are we trying to bring those transient and the hard part with with attracting the transients is that they come from all over. So it's very difficult to do like search engine marketing in 30 different markets because you wouldn't be able to afford doing that. But you build your circle from the inside out and that's your current customers. It's, it's making sure that when everybody leaves, they've had a positive experience and that is what you pull through and there's a reason to, why would we come anywhere else? You know, we love it here. Um, and boaters like to go where they like to go. You know, I, I find that people go back to where you had, a, man, we had a great time, let's go back there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that tends to, and I know that happens at Sangs all the time, you know, because Jeff has got that part figured out real good. He treats people great. They love going there. And that's, that's a, tan it's intangible, but it becomes very tangible when it comes to people spending 150 bucks a night to tie up a, a big boat, you know? Well, I think we're ready to take that step. Yeah. Um, I think we're, I think we're ready to upgrade, if you mm -hmm. will, and, and we're ready to, we've got beautiful facilities, mm -hmm. but we need to train our staff and we need to get the word out. And people are coming, but getting them to stay just that one extra night, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. that can double everything. Um, and making sure that when they leave, they're talking about it. And well, it's whether you're the destination or just the stopover. Yeah. You know, and we're generally not a stopover because we're really not on the way to anywhere. You're either coming to Manistee or you're going you know, north or south. Well, Lennington, Lennington to Frankfurt is, because I used to work at that marina during, in college. Lennington to Frankfurt was the perfect Yeah, it's a perfect ah. run. It was a perfect and run. And so you, know, you had to come here because you wanted to be here or the weather forced you to. And if you're going point to point, you're, I don't know, you could be 10 miles offshore going right. point to point. So why would you, you know, why come here? Right. You know? So that's, that's what you have to transcend. But those things I think can be overcome. And, you know, it's almost like you're kind of starting from scratch. Yeah. The marina has been so, you know, disadvantaged over the last few years and it really hasn't, it just was just a weird, you know, set of circumstances that half our docks are gone or whatever, but nothing you can do, you know. So now you're through that. The docks are going to be beautiful. Whatever the water levels are, you're going to be able, because that was the other bit, you know. The, the, it's just been remarkable, like you said, how close we are removed from that record low. Right. I can remember stepping off my friend's flybridge right onto the river walk. That's nine feet. Mm -hmm. Now that's... You know, it's not like that at all. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's just, it's crazy. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to, you know, whether it's a work session or another meeting or working with staff or whatever to come up with, a, with some strategies and, and maybe a proposal. Um, but I think the first phase from a marketing, you know, from an outside contractor view would be updating your photography, your video. I don't know that you need a standalone website. I think the, the website could probably be fine where it's at. Again, Manistee Marina takes you right there. So you're not having to navigate people to that site. So we, we have obviously a city website and then there's a marina page. Mm -hmm. We used to have multiple Facebook pages and multiple 
social media accounts. And I think it was last year we brought them all in under one. Do you think there's an advantage or disadvantage to at least that aspect? Well, I would think there, as a marina, it's a, you know, it's a pretty standalone in, in, like you said, it's an enterprise and it truly is. So I think from that standpoint, it makes sense to have a standalone because I get it from a citywide. I mean, you can't have, you know, everybody can't have their own Facebook page. Well, for us, it was content control. Right. And, you know, with the Marine, especially if you've got a, an actively engaged manager that can keep that content, because it's got to be, if you're going to commit to doing it, then you've got to do it. But the other thing it does is the difference between, in social media, between organic and paid. So organic is we've got 300 people that like our Facebook page. We put it out there. Those 300 people get it. Paid is we can go to Ludington and do a Facebook campaign, Holland and do a Facebook campaign, and do them, you know, either by zip code or by radius, where we're targeting people on Facebook that haven't liked our page, but maybe boaters. So, and that allows you through Facebook to market yourselves, uh, outbound marketing, um, for a very minimal cost. And it could be a program that maybe the first year you do five markets, and then the next year you do ten markets, and the next year maybe you maybe you go and circle the lake because it, it, it could it's all attainable. You just have to have the the process in place to do it. So I would think in a in the realm of a marina it would make sense to have your own your own Facebook page. That would I think there'd be a lot of benefits to that because that's just another way to engage people. That if it's not there, you don't know what you're missing out on. You know, it's just one of those things. But again, this could all be incorporated. I would just recommend a, a marina marketing plan that would encompass what your objectives are, take into consideration what your strengths, weaknesses are, um, you know, what opportunities there are to, to um, enhance your brand, which I think a lot of that is pretty obvious. Um, and then beyond that, you know, what type of outbound marketing would you do to, um, you know, to get your word out to people that aren't currently getting there? But you're absolutely right. The, the word of mouth is that's number one. So. Is that something that you could put a proposal together to develop a marina marketing plan? And obviously, I think that'd be the first step. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in the first year, it's taking some of those low cost items. Yeah, there could be like some a la cartes because, I mean, that's oftentimes when I have an initial discussion with somebody or an organization or a business, you know, they need to do 15 things, but we can only really do six. So number one, what are the 15 things we need to do? And then how do we prioritize that to the top six and then well, and, and, putting and, an action plan in place? You know? And in fairness, our budget's going to be approved in two weeks mm -hmm. <laughs> for the whole next year. Um, so if we're going to, there's, there's, there's a little bit of money in there, but mm -hmm. not a lot. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to roll out a more earnest plan, we're going to need to be able to budget that next year to go into I think, you know, my five minutes advice would be to focus on you got a new manager that knows what's going on. Use her talent to develop your, you know, your staff. I know with seasonal employees, it's tough because you're starting over every year. That may be good because you can teach them the new way of doing things. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, phasing in, you know, outbound marketing um, as, as time and, and uh and resources permit, but I also thought it would be a opportune time to, to team up with Fricanos mm -hmm. because obviously from a restaurant, he's going to attract people from land, but every one of his locations except for Grand Rapids is along the water and tied to the marina, and mm -hmm. so he gets a tremendous mm -hmm. boat fan, boat crowd that follows him, and from that aspect, it seems like we should be able to team up and. Do some comments well and just there. you know just the improvements to the facility will present word of mouth opportunities that weren't there be you know previously yeah. because there's i mean it, you're either on a brand new dock or you're not and a brand new dock at the right height goes a long way yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. so you know those are all little things that are that are huge but um yeah i mean i'd, I'd be you know would you want that proposal prior to like in the next two weeks or you're working with the budget you have to work with this year and then you know expand on that moving forward I, I think we could do a small budget amendment to it but um, it does I don't think it has to be within the two weeks okay so okay. I think it's something we can work on in the next do you meet meeting. monthly or do you meet quarterly or how do you how Once as needed quarterly or? every time Kelly tells us we have to <laughs> 
It's monthly during the summer season, isn't yep. it? And really? the, the next meeting is June 21st. I mean, would that be soon enough? Yeah, I mean, maybe you and I can work on on a draft before then, but then we bring back something that we feel will work to at yeah. the next meeting. Well, and you're, you've kind of got your finger on the pulse of this stuff, and I mean, it's, it's your baby. Um, but I know nothing about marketing. Understood, understood. But you know enough that we've already kind of hit on what the obvious first steps are. The only thing I know about social media is they talk bad about me all the time. <laughs> Popularity is not always... Can we work that into the proposal a little bit? <laughs> Cleaning up my image? Um, but no, I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to sit down and at least give you some, some things on paper that you guys can... can and I think it would be, I'd like to hear from, from you guys that are lifelong voters and you know, what, what makes you attracted to go try someplace or what are the things, I mean, that's important is what, what's a deal breaker for you? What's, what'll make you go off course to go check something out? Or contrary, well, I'll never go back there again for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, people might not like docking in the current. I mean, it's, you know, it can be, it's a know, challenge. it can be a challenge, you know. It's different, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Just it, it, everybody's everybody's got their own ideas, you know. What, but one of the, I mean, this is a long, thirty years ago when I was working there. But one of the ways that we sold that was we're going to have two dock attendants out there ready for helping me. you to get in. So don't let the current be no. Don't be afraid of it because we're going to be here to help you. And that and, and that those, was a very positive thing. Those two had. dock attendants are basically the welcome wagon for the community of Manistee. They're not just there to, to you know, for somebody to throw a, a line to. They are your first. And if that kid has got a, a smile on his or her face and they're happy to be there, then that translates. If they're slogging through the motions, that translates too. Ty, and, was it wasn't it your wife that was working on the marketing and? I helped with an article about the third gateway to the community or something. She was working um, <clears throat> with the marina manager. With Laura? With Laura uh, doing Facebook work. Okay. Um, they identified a big boarding community Facebook groups around the lake mm -hmm. and uh, addressed whatever they were putting together to those people. The, the CVD, I think it was the CVB then that did the, the third gateway. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. I mean, we. I'd like to reach out to them because they've mm -hmm. got a lot. Of oh, by all means. We're we're not necessarily going to put people in beds, but a, a positive visit to Manistee on a boat can return oh, as a positive visit in a car, okay. right? So there may be some way that we can angle them into helping promote it. Too. I would think that would be integral to partner with them, yeah. in, you know, in in various ways. There, there's no doubt about it, you know. Um, and what's you know, I know that things have taken different iterations over the years. But what's the what's the line? What line are people towing right now? If right. I mean, I I could give you my sixty second elevator speech on why you should come to Manistee, but we should all be talking the same lingo, you know, if we're working in the hospitality business, which I consider the marina to be the hospitality business. I mean, so. The, uh, <clears throat> Spent some time putting together a uh, flyer, if you want to call it that, to all of the boat clubs, sail clubs, marinas, around Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I think there were over 100 that we sent out, and it was a, it was a something that they could post on their bulletin board, mm -hmm. announcing that the new marina was open, what the facilities were. And we got a lot of response from them from boaters in the immediate summers after that. And then kind of died off because of the water conditions and other things. But I think that <clears throat> being a sailor, we have a different attitude than the power boaters regarding where we want to go, how long we want to take to get there, and, and what we're going to look for when we arrive. And uh, so I think that has to be addressed. The difference between the power boaters and the sail boaters, you can't, you can't look at us all alike because we're not. Mm -hmm. Um, where sailors are kind of panning us, and uh, we thought of words the same way, but... <laughs> Can't we all just get along? <laughs> We're going for a boat ride, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. Okay, okay, my only comment is that, that there's some, uh, some part of, of the program that will address the, the 
needs and desires of those distinct groups. Oh, that's a good point. You're you're proposing segregation. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. Because that's what that was that's what I was taught the first week I worked at the marina. Don't put them together. No, 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 for sure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but the. Uh, well, those are all good things, and you know, again, uh, part of a plan, you get some new photos, um, maybe you do up a nice press release, maybe you get some earned media over the winter, you know, hey, we've got this new facility, we've been upgraded, we, you know, tell that, sto whatever that story is, tell that story. You know, we got Furcano's right here, we got the river walk, I mean, there's a thousand reasons to come to Manistee. We just have to, you know, be cognizant of that at every turn. Well, I, and just as you were talking, you already got me, got the wheels turning a little bit. Like, let them know when the Forest Festival is totally. ahead of time, because that's a wonderful place to come visit. Mm -hmm. You know, when we used to have hops and pro or we have hops and props, or mm -hmm. used to be grapes on the river, but just some of those events that. Well, all those things, even you know, even the Thursday night concerts or the Tuesday night concerts at the beach, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things are a reason somebody could come here, and that could have been, you know. F this is the best time we ever had. Well, it happens every Tuesday. Come on back, you know. And you can't take that for granted. We live here. We, I mean, we get to see this every day. Um, you know, just think of the people, you know, afraid are going through. I mean, we see it every day. I still don't take it for granted. We, my kids were little. You hear the horn, big boat. We still, somebody hears the horn in our house and they say big boat because we'd have to take the kids, right? I mean, is that what we did? You take, you'll be doing it. You laugh at me. <laughs> and you're going to be down there watching the boat go through. And, it, you know, it, you see it a hundred times and it still is just really fascinating. But that's unique to Manistee. So all of those things, you know, but to your point, a sailor, you know, if you got to come in, you got to go through a couple of drawbridges and eh, why bother? You know, it's just, it's more hassle than it's worth. You can go five miles up the coast and throw a mooring in Portage and be on your own, you know, so. You know, we're, we're moving in maybe six knots. Right. On a good day. Right. And, uh, totally port to port. More. Well, and I think sailors are more apt to just throw an anchor for the night than, than a power boater is. I mean, in general, I mean. We are, one of the things that we talked about and then that we have not talked about it much more was developing an anchorage in Massey Lake for once the marina is full, for instance, if people would just run their anchor out. Mm -hmm. then, um, you know, it seems like anchorage there that's available to them. every summer there's a few boats that you see the same boats that they anchor right out there and mm -hmm. You know that you know it's the same guy he's come back there and you know he can get his dinghy in or whatever he needs to do and there's people that prefer that you know to just be self-contained i personally like to get on the dock and you know feel some ground under my legs but part of the um, draw of sailing is getting off the boat and finding the cocktail lounge so. okay <laughs> <laughs> but, then we have a lot in common here so. <laughs> you have said it already and i and I've experienced this. I mean, it's the destination that first draws people here, mm -hmm. but it's experience once you get here, which is in part the town. But it also is the facility, how clean it is, the attitude of the workers there. I mean, we, working on the staff is huge. And helping them to know the image they're creating. Do, do we have uniforms for the workers? No, we, we discussed that a couple days ago. I really think, it, you know, it's hard to take into effect the different, the different weather. You don't want to have a lot of different things. Right. Jeff but, is thinking t-shirts and sweatshirts, and I mean, we should have something and something nice. Yeah, we're going to do something yeah. to make sure that you're easily identifiable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And uh, the height of the dock this year, are we taking them down a ways? We will be taking them down. The new ones I've got set flush with the with the bulkhead, mm -hmm. but I think they even need to go down a little bit. What a nice system, though, to be able to adjust it. Yeah. I mean, it's tedious, but it's still, it's an option that you... Yeah, but if you have to do it once a year, and, and if then they all fit, perfect. Right. You know. <clears throat> Which in itself is a big deal. We've all tied up places where there's a huge mismatch. Right. Well, we're Here, we can, we'll be season year by year. Last year, the docks were fine. Right. This year we're, we're approaching 18 inches lower already, mm -hmm. but we have the ability to adjust the docks to the same level they were relative last year. So, I mean, that's that's a we made sure that was part of the design. Right. 
Yeah. Oh. And, and not all marinas offer that. By right. Far. Well, unless you go the floating dock, and then you're then you're on that. So that's. But on the river, that's. I don't think you could do the floating dock on the river very easily. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm very much in favor of of uh, asking Mark to put together a, a proposal and laying out, understanding what our needs are and that we're going to need to walk a little before we run mm -hmm. and be able to ramp up. Well, it's exciting because moving forward, I mean, the, it's all there now. I mean, it's, it's all going to be there now. You don't have one hand tied behind your back anymore. So I think it's time, if there's a time to shine, the time is now. But you can't just flip a switch either. Yeah, you know? right, right. It's, it's going to be a process. And, um, but it, the, the simple, the low-hanging fruit is what we've already talked about. Well, our finance director has said at the budget presentation for the past 10 years that it is a, that the marina is the toughest budget, the biggest challenge, and that there's little hope of it being self-sustaining and profitable, and it ticks me off every year, and I want to change that around. <laughs> yes. I really do. How many slips are there, Jeff? We have 37 slips. Um, two of them are dedicated to the gas stock, um, mm -hmm. and then we've got all the broadside mm -hmm. up to the bridge. So you can't really say how many boats because it depends on the on the length, you know, <clears> in terms <throat> of the total capacity. Yeah, and I haven't seen it. I, I've very infrequently seen it, but when, when, when Gritty and I worked there in high school, we doubled them up yeah. and we rafted. Right. I mean, we would have sailboats three, four right. rafted off the ends. So... We have plenty of capacity. Right. You solve that problem when you have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way is just to get your raft up to your buddy, and then you save a little and, money. And the cool thing about boaters, they usually don't mind that, and they make the best out of it, and it's they make five friends instead of two, and mm -hmm. you know they're really easy going with that. And, and it, that <coughs> place was packed every night, mm -hmm. every night. And I think I can get back there again, too. You know, again, there's a lot of variables. You know, I wonder how these guys, all my buddies with the big boats, I say, when you don't have any gas money this summer, let me know. I'll take you for a ride in mine. Because it, it's going to be, you know, a hardship for some people. Well, but I think you're right. It's not just the facilities, but the fact that we've got an ice cream shop right there. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're going to have a restaurant back right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, when 440 was there, that was a big draw for that big facility. Time. And we lost that. Um, the fact that we've got the brewery right across the bridge and you know there's just a lot of positive things that have happened that should should really we should be able to propel the business well down at my office <coughs> all day long we see people going by from sayings and you know they're from sayings they're either on the cruiser bikes or they're walking and you know they're they're going from sayings to, to get something to eat or you know go shopping or bucket <coughs> bath with bags in their hands and yeah so, well, I'll get with Jeff, and then we'll plan to, to come back on June 21st. I'm making sure that <coughs> that date is good. Is that a Tuesday? You always meet on Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. That should be good. Um, and then, you know, we can, we can take <coughs> baby step forward, you know. But I think square one is just taking care of what you have to take care of and, and being, you know, cognizant of those things and then going from there. But you know, this summer it would be easy to conceive. You know, getting you know, getting a drone out and getting some, some new photos and video, and you know, just giving you the assets you need to tell that story, because we can't show an old picture. I mean, right. the picture from last year is, is passe at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, so you'd do more harm than good showing that old photo. And a deck full of diners, they said, to yeah. the arena would be a good thing. Well, right, and, and to photos. that point, I mean, that you know. You're gonna. That's gonna be later in the summer when that stuff happens. You know, it's just a fact. But it's all there. You guys have got a great asset. Um, I applaud the the ninth uh, ninth street improvement. I think that's a that's brilliant. That's a. I think that's a diamond in the rough down there. It really is. I mean, and I, I'm spoiled because I live by the golf course and launch at the beach. So, it you know it makes it easy for me and. Um, you know, I see Tom out all the time. We all, we all, us boaters, we all know each other, it seems like. But I, I, I enjoy the ninth being the, in the rough. You know, we have to be careful how much we manicure it. At Ninth Street? It's well used, as it is. Mm -hmm. so people do like that. It's but, incredible. The, the highest use of that facility 
is in the is January and February. Oh, because of ice fishing. It's an easy access. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Yep. You step right out of your car, right on the ice, and you take ten steps, and it's thirty feet deep. Right. So. And you're yeah, you're in a good spot of the lake and and all that. The only the only concerns we've heard are that. Um, the local residents of the neighborhood want to keep that as just the little as the kids swimming hole but mm -hmm. but yeah and it's well used that way oh my gosh yes <coughs> yep and it's upstream from the sewer plants so. <laughs> <laughs> well by august that won't matter won't matter right <laughs> let's hope well thank you and i look forward to our next meeting together and i'll get with jeff and we'll uh We'll go forward from there. So thank you all. Appreciate what you do. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, Mark. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> Katie, yeah. is the Facebook something you can I develop? Think, yes. Because <clears throat> that sounds to be like probably our first step. <clears throat> well, we want to stay consistent with the city's social media policy is, but but we can start posting more marina specific things with Kelly. Okay, but not um, have a separate page. Well, we can have that conversation, but right now the policy doesn't allow that. I see. Okay. Um, is is Fricano expanding his deck uh, towards the river walk this year? Um, not till there's a that conversion takes place as far as I know. Yeah, so they're going to they they're working to open up this summer and then next summer would be the deck. I knew the deck to the west was waiting, but also the expanding towards the water's edge. Yes. On yeah. hold as well. Mm -hmm. my, that's my understanding. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the land underneath the current deck mm -hmm. is city prop, city marina property. Right. And they, they utilize that under lease. But to purchase it and then purchase some additional outside that deck for expansion, that's on hold right now. So... We could lease additional. Though. We probably could lease additional. Okay. Where, where do we stand regarding the patio area next to the marina? So, um, Brandon, Brandon, my lead man in the street department, and I have talked about that. Um, we're going to do some concrete pouring at the disc golf course, and then we're going to go down um, and come up with our plan. But we plan on doing that improvement this spring. So I actually pulled out the old engineering recommendations, and I don't remember where the commission landed on our optimum choice. But I, I think, for simplicity and cost, we basically said a concrete slab, and then the only debatable if it's going to be exposed to aggregate or not. Right. <clears throat> the other thing I don't think we ever resolved was whether we just want to surface run off to a stream or get more. So the plane, the plan sh clearly shows piping in an outlet below the through the bulkhead. So that's something that we plan on doing. Because remember, there there's that 55 gallon or that plastic drum that's already there, so that at least should get piped out. Right. Yeah, great. But yeah, that's on our spring list. Do you know what we were talking about for patio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that last week. <clears throat> Have we stimulated any public comments? So excited to see you from Big Carter. I'm a sailboat owner, so we can't relate to power boats. But coming from Georgia and I coming from Chicago and being there for over 20 years, I was there about 10, 12 years. Both were employed by a private company. He worked for the Public Works. I want to say customer service by far, even if you have crappy docks, if you have someone out there, especially if you're sailing solo, that's what you're hoping for. Good pump out and good gas, having that convenience available because you never know when you the company that I work for, that George has been forever, um, owns 10 sailboats, and they're constantly looking for places to go. Their clients, 
don't want to just stay in Chicago. They don't want to go from Harvard to Harvard. They want to go. And Manistee has got to be the place. I mean, I think Facebook would be huge because young people do use that a lot. But I know there's those ties. But drone pictures of the area, I mean, sometimes that's a huge. They are. Even now when I was selling my house in Chicago to come here, um, the drone was what sold it. I was going to ask if you do drone Huge attractions. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing it how it gives you totally a totally different. Mm -hmm. But customer yeah. service is huge. And cleanliness, bathrooms, you know, convenience. But Manistee is like a, a diamond in the rough. I mean, seriously, you can walk <clears throat> to anything. I mean, when I went across to um, St. Joe's, you, you had to get like taxis, or you had to you had to do quite a hike. Here, even if you had a little that little hot dog stand or a, a, a food truck that would come down, if there wasn't anything going on, they would be willing to go down there. I mean, yes, you definitely want to get off the boat. I mean, you do, you do. Um, but the convenience of it, to get back on a clean boat or a you know, boat that's been fueled up again and there's help, because, you know, sailing, you have all conditions. It could be perfect in a sailboat to go that way, you need to go this way. So, you know, having attendance there um, is huge. He does timeshares is what he does, and they're bare boat. So once you get uh, qualified on his boat, you put in credits, you take it out for the weekend, you take it out for a week and do whatever you want with it. We'd like to get a couple up here that we could either put seasonally or find a spot for them so we can get people in the destination because you can fly up here, you can take the Badger, you can take the Muskegon, you can take, you can drive, you can do anything. And then a sailboat up here, you know, so, or a boat. My advantage is, or what I think is too, if you come up here to fish, the lake is terrible, five, six footers, you can go up the river and you can fish Manistee Lake. And a lot of sailors are fishermen, so they're, they're looking to do that too, you know. It's not just waste, so, you know, it's what you know, we do. And you can even sail up there if you wanted to. And two broad bridges is nothing. We used to do 27 going to our morning yeah. in the fall in Chicago, and that was some adventures. Okay. Yeah. Could be a five hour, could be a ten hour trip. Okay. Kudos for, I mean, this is the time to jump. I know you miss that timeline because of the season, unfortunately, but I, having young adults in their 30s and well, 40, they really depend on views. Like they really look at destination, how they, and then they look at the reviews and photos are huge. So we can pull that off. I, I, I think it, you know, it'll be a nice flow. And yeah, it's great to maybe do it during a lot of things that are happening, but if not, some people don't like a lot of crowds or whatever. You still promote what's available. The theater, if it is crappy, they could go to the theater for the day, you know, if they didn't want to be on the boat. Um, yeah, so cheapest much. movie theater in the state I of know, Michigan is so. blocks down. So yeah, free okay, popcorn on the twenty first, and yeah. yeah. But I, I think those little community things, like what, what's the game they play down at Bluefish? Um, oh, trivia. Oh yeah. I mean, just stuff like that. That would make me want to go visit a, a particular bar, or restaurant, yeah. or something. Just a little gimmick going on, and it's a yeah. weekly thing. Like you said, the concerts at the band shell and yeah. the casino's always here. That's always a draw. Yeah, we, but, used, to get, we used to get so many from Ludington on a rainy day. Sure, they drive up to the casino. Yeah. I mean, that was what they wanted to do. 
Well, like I never even. I, don't know how many boaters gamble, but I, think a lot I never even thought like day. just advertising the amount of charter boats that we have available. Oh yeah, All right. Um, you know, you might come up on a sailboat, jump on a charter boat, and go fish it. We got salmon to eat that night. Yep. yep. People will run you up the river. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, we some of those resources are unbelievable. Um, I had mentioned before that I hope with our that we would get some uh, discs to loan to boaters as we develop this new disc golf course. Yeah, just to uh, loan out. That, I thought you were going to donate some. I don't have any. <laughs> I've never thrown one in my life. Yes. Oh, and Mark, we may have uh, scooters coming into town too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that they'll have to be, be they location. can't be right by the water, but yeah. I'll tell you what, I've been in Grand Rapids a lot, and uh, those things are everywhere. And even if my money's neighbor wants, like they would just stop them. That's where they live. They do. But they do pick them up. Yeah, they do. It's, it's just interesting. They have these scooters and bikes. Like it's bizarre. <laughs> and somehow I don't know how getting on one of those at midnight with a bunch of drinks is going to Experience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's as scary as you talked about boats rafting up against each other. <laughs> That's what, yeah. As know. you come back from the bar. Uh, <laughs> Any comments by commissioners? No, I think we're on the right track. I think we're I ready just, to adjourn. Yeah, and I just would mention we I did send in the the EDA grant. They wanted some more information for the South River Walk that was submitted. So we'll um, hopefully we'll hear back soon if we get it. So. And another thing, when um, and it made me think of two things, but like when the Catamaran Racing Association approached the city. I thought that would just be really cool just from a visual display mm -hmm. on the harbor. So they have very little impact on city services or the city park. Uh -huh. So that to me, that's so easy to accommodate that group and, and mm -hmm. other groups. And then if you re read the recent article in the newspaper about the Princess of Manistee mm -hmm. and you know the, how positive that was and how positive the community's been to him, and um, I think I told you I met with him at the end of the season last year, and he can't wait, um, can't wait to start back up. And, and I think that's just another little community uniqueness with our harbor that, you know, we should always be looking for those type of opportunities to set us, set us apart. I didn't really read the article, but I know he hopes to offer more dining as part of the package this year. Well, he was pretty clear that he, he exceeded all of his business and financial goals that he had set for Ludington last year. Like even he was worried that he was going to lose a portion of those by moving to a different port because everybody had already booked rooms, restaurants, mm -hmm. but he said they either commuted and made it work or they relocated up here. But he said, uh, it just exceeded every expectation he had. So, in terms of the catamaran racing, I hope third time's a charm because they have that wretched sailing weather. Uh, city manager, we determined this morning's in charge of weather now. <laughs> so you have to put your request in early. It's the only it's just been a bust for that. I know. Yeah. Every year. Every year. But they still want to keep coming back. It's you know? cool. You know, it's cool. But I feel bad for them because those things are made to go. And yeah. They're to go when they're All starting to right. blow. Is there a date yeah, but they love Is there a yeah, date? That. They do have a date scheduled already this year. I think it's in August. August. Yeah. I don't remember the exact day. Second weekend, something like that. But that's stuff that we should promote. You know, Absolutely. come watch the racing. Even if yeah. the wind doesn't blow, I mean, get them here. <clears throat> so. That's adjourned. Well, that's a really good input. Thank you very much. Yeah. I need a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. All right. And vote yes. <laughs> okay.